Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. Uh, it is wonderful to have you here. Thank you so much for joining me today. My name is Samantha and I am the knitter and knitwear designer behind the account The Stricka Chick. So I'm doing another one of my kind of yarn review informative videos for you today. Um, because earlier today, well, I'm filming on a Saturday in the afternoon evening ish and earlier today, it was a beautiful spring day here in the Arctic circle of Norway, where I live with my fiance. And by spring, I mean, um, we've officially hit a snow record. So there is lots and lots of snow on the ground, but the sun was shining and there was no wind. Um, and that means up here, it's a great ski day. So we um, packed up our skis, we got all our gear and we went out. And one of the things that is essential to bring along when you go skiing up in Tromsø is a turgenser or an outdoor sweater. And up here, one of the most popular yarns to make turgensers in is the yarn Letlapi from Eastex, which is actually an Icelandic wool yarn. And that's what I wanted to talk to you about because I am fairly new to Letlapi, but I feel like at this point I've knit quite a bit for a newbie um, with this yarn. And I've heard it popping up in a lot of different places. I mean, the Knit Pearl Girl on um, Instagram, she has knit with Let Let Be before and she loves it because she says it feels like very authentic wooly wool and it really does. Um, so yeah, if you have been looking to try Let Let Be or have been wanting more information about the yarn, then this is the place for you. Um, I hope that you enjoy hearing a little about it. And as always, if you want to hear similar yarny thoughts. Um, if you're more of a podcast person, then I have those as well. Uh, go ahead and hit the like and subscribe. Uh, that helps me out a lot. But yeah, let let be. So I have a, a little bit of let let be in my stash. I definitely don't have like a sweaters quantity anymore um, because I just cast off one of my um, big let let be projects of the year. And that was the Hoppy sweater by Linka Newman. More on that later. So Letlepi is a versatile, light, and warm yarn, is how they advertise it. So the label looks kind of like this. And it is 100% wool. It's kind of, um, uh, not roving, it's just, it's single ply almost. Um, it, it's like you, I mean, it's a very kind of splitty yarn I've noticed when I knit with it. Sometimes I can kind of poke through the yarn uh, makes it a little bit difficult to knit with, but it's not like a very frequently occurring problem, so it's probably typically fine. Um, it is, yeah, a 100% new wool, and it is a Icelandic yarn, so it's produced in Iceland. And Letlapi is kind of, it's the lighter version of the very traditional Alafaslepi, which is an Icelandic wool yarn that is significantly thicker than this. I think it's about if you hold let let be double stranded, you'll get a strand of alafas let be, which is meant to be knit on six to seven millimeter needles. But let let be is meant for four to five millimeter needles and you get a hundred meters in a 50 gram skein. So this is, they're not, they don't really have the color names on Let Let Be before. So kind of, if you see people talking about it, like if you see patterns with Let Let Be, you'll usually see like a color code with uh, four letters. Like this one is 1418. And that's because the shade names vary so much from country to country. So of course, all the original shade names are in Icelandic. And when I buy them here in Norway, they're in Norwegian. And so it's kind of, it's hard to translate that name over with all the different languages. So um, whenever I do my Ravelry projects as well, I usually just put in the code so that it's kind of, it's, it's easily translatable from country to country. Um, and this actually, so, Alafas Lepi, Let Lepi um, are used in a variety of Norwegian outdoor tour sweaters, like I mentioned before. So you'll find quite a few of them whoop, <laughs> in these um, in books like this, like this one, for example, by uh, Linka Newman, who is just amazing at writing patterns for outdoor sweaters. Um, she kind of this one that's on the cover, that's the Hoppi sweater, and I'll show you my version later. Um, but there's quite a few in here. So um, it's kind of, 
you can replace Letlepi with a couple Norwegian yarns, like um, there's a, a spinnery called Hillesvag Unvarafabriken, and they make these yarns called Varda and Vidda, and they're, um, they're all natural wool yarns as well. Um, so that kind of, it has the same feel as Letlepi, and so it's easily translatable. One of the nicest things about Letlepi is the fact that it, I mean, as the name implies, Let means light. So Letlepi is a very light yarn. Um, I've noticed this because, like, for example, I don't know if you've heard of the Ridari sweater. It's a very, very popular traditional Icelandic colorwork sweater, um, and it is meant to be knit in Letlepi. But I use Drops Nepal when I knit mine, and I know a lot of other people do too, and I unfortunately don't have it here to show you. It was a gift for my fiancé's grandpa, so we gave that to him two Christmases ago. It is no longer in my possession. But Nepal grows a lot when you block it. It sags under the weight of the yarn, and that's not something that happens with Letlepi. So Letlepi is very true to its kind of, the way that you knit it is the way it's going to sit on you, kind of. The dimensions are not going to change that much. And that can be really nice um, because also, like <laughs> today when I went skiing, you guys, I am not a good skier. Um, and this, when I say skiing, I mean cross-country skiing, which is a different kind than you might be accustomed to. It's, um, they're very thin skis. And instead of going just downhill, you're kind of going along a trail that's carved out. So you've got lots of uphills, lots of downhills. You've got to use different techniques when you, um, I mean, for different terrain, obviously. Um, and I was not um, in the right shape for it, I think. This was my debut ski trip of the year. So I ended up face planting a couple times. And when I did that, obviously my sweater got drenched in snow. And the good thing about Let Lepi is that when that happens to you, um, it doesn't really, like, it, it's almost waterproof in a way. It doesn't absorb the water and it doesn't weigh the sweater down. And that's why Let Lepi is such a good choice for outdoor sweaters or anything that you're going to be kind of active in, um, which is what it's traditionally used for here. Because the one complaint I've heard, and I'm, I'm just going to tell you about Let Lepi while I change out what I have in my stash. So I have two skeins. This yarn that was left over from my Hoppy sweater, and then I also have some bits and baubles of this like burnt orange yarn that's left over from both the sweaters and Let Lepi that I've knit. So one of the biggest complaints about Let Lepi that I have heard from people is that Let Lepi is scratchy. And I agree, Let Lepi is a very, very scratchy yarn. And I say this as someone without any kind of wool sensitivity, right? I. I mean, at least I think I have never I've never come across a wool that I have been very sensitive to before. But let lepi will trigger that for me, and that is even if because you're meant to wear let lepi with like a layer at least underneath it, um, just because we we love our layers when we go on hiking and skiing trips. It's like oh, it gets too warm, take off a layer. Um, so you've got multiple with different purposes, and underneath your sweater that you are hiking, you have a base layer. Um, and when I wear like a, a north face wicking base layer kind of thing, Let Lepi will scratch right through it. Actually, the only kind of base layer that Let Lepi will not bother me through is my um, pure merino wool long underwear. And that Let Lepi will not penetrate through. So it's like you need a pretty thick base layer in order to keep Let Lepi from being scratchy for you. And that also applies to like where it sits at your neck because that's a problem for a lot of people as well. That's a very itchy area. So it's like you need to have a cowl or a turtleneck or something that sits underneath it. And that's why it's really good for these outdoor sweaters because it's also a very durable yarn. Um, my, so like my hubby sweater is still very, very new, but my boyfriend's sweater that I made for him in Let Lepi is quite old. And um, parts of it have pilled the parts in different yarn, which I'll show you, but like the Let Lepi has not. Um, so there is almost no pilling with Let Lepi yarn that I have noticed, which is very, very nice. Um, but yeah, it is very scratchy. So if you are sensitive to wool, beware. And there are alternatives to Let Lepi, but it's just such a unique, rustic, natural yarn. So it just feels so nice. And this is, this is, I think this is called Lemon or something. I used this for Kevin's outdoor sweater. And I'll show you the sweaters in a minute. They're just buried under all the yarn. Yeah, so this is what I have in my stash. I've got a little bit of this 
red, like just, I think there's like two grams of it. There's barely anything. And I've got this glacier blue heather that is just the most gorgeous color. And I have a little bit of this chocolatey brown that I used in my sweater. And then there's more. So there's quite a big color range for Let Lopi. And so one of the things I really recommend using Let Lopi for is um, colorwork sweaters, which is what they are traditionally meant to be used for. So this is an example. This is actually the first sweater I ever knit in Let Lopi. And if you've been following me for a while on YouTube, you will remember this as something that I once described as my forever sweater. This is Kevin's Arctisk Sommergenser. It's a sweater from the outdoor sweater book by Linka Neumann, her Wilmarksgenser tool book. Um, so because Kevin does not like itchiness, he, he's not a big fan. Um, so what I did for him was I used Drops Lima, which is a slightly thinner yarn as the main body color and I did all the accents in Let Lepi because he really fell in love with the colors that um, Linka Newman used in her sample in the book. So we wanted to put those in there but then also have a nice soft non-itchy option for the main body and, and for the collar as well. So I don't know if you can see, actually it drops Lima's holding up pretty well too. I thought I noticed some pills on him when we were out earlier today. But it is kind of like there's a little, little, little bit of pilling. It's not, it's not super noticeable, and it's more like, um, because he always carries a backpack when we go skiing, so you can kind of see that it's starting to pill around where his backpack rubs with the sweater. Aha, here, here. I think you can see it there. Yes. Yeah. So that's starting to pill a little bit, but the let lepi is perfectly fine. Um, there is no pillage. Um, the colors are, um, they're very color fast. So when you block it, even with this like really white base yarn, um, I mean, there was no bleeding whatsoever. And I think you can kind of see that looking at the colors. So yeah, it is, it's really, really nice for color work because it is very light yarn. Um, you're not gonna have, so, um, I'll, I'll show you my Maryland Heights sweater in a minute because I used Let Lepi for part of it and I do really believe that Let Lepi can be used as a yarn alternative to the yarn that I used. Um, so some of my testers for that sweater knitted in Drops Nepal um, and the yoke sagged so much after blocking. Um, and that's just one of those things with a lot of yarns that you use for color work where it's because you have all these floats in your color work, right? Like a uh, bane of my existence floats. I hate floats. Um, but when you have those, it really weighs down the fabric. Um, and Let Lepi does not do that. And that's why Let Lepi is such a nice choice for color work. The color fastness and because it is so light, but it's still so warm. I mean, it was like, apparently um, it felt like it was minus 10 degrees today outside. And Kevin and I were perfectly nice and warm in our Let Let Be sweaters. So yeah, it is, it's a very, very warm material. And this is my Hopi sweater by Linka Newman. And I think I'm showing you the back. I don't know, because this one I didn't put short rows in, but I did make a mistake on one side. So this is, um, this is my front. So this is kind of another color work sweater that has a really, really pretty yoke pattern on it. Um, and yeah, I think Let Lopi doesn't grow much. That's a little bit. So I am very used to my sleeves growing. And I know a lot of people, if you've knit and blocked a lot before, you'll kind of have this inherent, like you'll be like, oh, my sleeves are a little bit too short, but it'll fix out in blocking. Do not think that with Let Lopi if you use it. You have to knit the sweater to exactly the dimensions you want the sweater to be um, because Let Lopi doesn't grow much. So that's, that's a little bit of an issue that I have come across with Let Lopi. Um, but yeah, I would highly, highly, highly recommend it for any kind of sweater that's gonna be a rough, tough, outer layer, beat up. Um, do you guys have outdoor sweaters where you live? I would love to know, because I feel like it's this very Norwegian thing, but it might not be. I mean, this is Icelandic yarn, so maybe it's like a very Scandinavian thing. Um, if they have them in Iceland and maybe Denmark as well, Sweden, I don't know, let me know, Finland. Yeah, so yes, I, I love Let Let Be for outdoor stuff, but I don't think I would use it for any other kind of sweater, um, just my outdoor sweaters. 
Um, and that is also another con about Let Lovey, in addition to it being very itchy. Well, I guess it's because of it being very itchy. I wouldn't use it for children's garments. If you really want to knit a sweater for kids, Eastex has another yarn that's called Kamba Garn, and it is supposed to be Icelandic wool for kids, so it's very, very soft, um, and it's a good alternative. I don't think you can interchange Kampagarn and Let Lepi necessarily, um, I'm not entirely sure, but it is an option to knit sweaters for kids if you're looking at Let Lepi. Another option, though it is slightly thinner, is Drops Lima, because I, I mean, I did my Arctisk Summer Genser for Kevin where I used Let Lepi and Drops Lima together, um, and it is about the same gauge, but Drops Lima is a bit thinner. And that's just because I think of the nature of how the yarn is constructed. Like it's technically supposed to be used on the same size needles, but Drops Lima is a little bit more tightly spun. And so that might kind of, but it does grow when you block. So it, it really depends on your swatching, but I think it could potentially be used for uh, patterns that call for let let be. And of course, Hillesvag Ullvara Fabrik, um, I've used their yarns before too, and that's a good substitute. Uh, Varda, at least. Um, and that's what I did on this sweater. So you've seen, I think, the Maryland Heights sweater before. This is one of my designs. And I knit this predominantly with um, Quince and Co. Owl. But then I started to run out of yarn on one of the sleeves. It was this sleeve, I believe. I can't even tell because I did such a good job. Haha, <laughs> it was this sleeve. Um, I started to run ooh, out of yarn here. And so I just kind of um, hodgepodged up whatever yarns were um, in my stash and tried to um, continue persevering on. So this at the top is Quince and Co. Owl. And this at the bottom is um, Hillesvag Ullvara Fabrik Varda, which like, look at that. I mean, I know there's a little bit of a difference, but it is so, 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 so similar. Um, and then here, on the cuff that I just showed you, this cuff. Um, you've got a little bit of let lepi. That's the brown that I showed you. There's some brown let lepi in there. And at the very end, when I ran out of the cranberry shade, you have a little bit of the red let lepi in there. And so I think that if Quince & Co. maybe is above your price point or doesn't ship to where you live, let Let Be is a very, very good alternative on this sweater. The only downside is that it is a little bit rougher than the Quince & Co. yarn, but it's still, I mean, the, the Quince & Co. didn't grow much when I blocked the yoke, and Let Let Be does not either. So, yeah, those are yarns that can very easily, I think, be substituted in for each other. So Let Let Be has a lot of alternatives, but it is a very, very well-loved yarn. At least up here in northern Norway, I think everybody has knit at least once with either Let Lepi or Alefas Lepi. Every knitter has knit at least once with it. Um, because everyone has their own um, Vilmarks Genser or um, outdoor wilderness sweater. So yeah, that's, I mean, that's, you typically do go with Let Lepi or Alefas Lepi to knit that. Um, it's, it's kind of like a cultural thing. So yes. Yeah, as far as whether I'll use a lot of Let Lepi in the future, I don't know if I would use it so much designing. Um, just because I'm not a huge color work design person, and I, I also don't know if there's kind of, if Let Lepi or if outdoor sweaters are a very kind of universal thing. Um, but I am really looking forward to knitting more outdoor sweaters in the future. Um, I, I mean, it's good to have at least a couple, I think, that you can alternate between, especially in the summer where you really do need them for when you're in the shadow of a mountain or when it's windy, but then they kind of get a little bit sweaty because you're kind of, you're, you're working out in them so much. Or then when you um, are around a campfire and you kind of get that campfire smell in your sweater and as nice as it is, sometimes you just want to like put it in the wash and have another one. Um, so there's definitely room for more than one outdoor sweater. Um, and yeah, maybe Kevin wants another one too. So I will probably be using it more just for personal use in the future. Yeah, 
Um, so I'm interested to know if you have ever worked with Let Let Be or All of Us Let Be. Um, have you liked it? What did you think about it? How have your sweaters worn um, or stood up against the test of time? Um, I, yeah, I, I would love to know, or if you kind of have found another alternative to Let Let Be that you kind of, you've tried the both and you're like, yeah, but this one's better. Um, let me know about that as well. Um, if you want to talk about anything else, or I guess um, leave me a comment below. If you want to come over and say hi elsewhere other than YouTube, if YouTube isn't your jam, then I am over on Instagram and Ravelry and TikTok as the Strikachik. And you can also find me on my own website, thestrikachik.com. Until next time, you guys, happy knitting! Bye!